Okay, so let's recite together. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasam. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasam. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasam. Homage to the sublime, the victorious, the totally self enlightened form. Okay, so today we are going to start with answering a few questions from last session. Um, first of all, we are going to look at um, a jhana mental process, the first attainment process, adhikamika jhana witi, that we have talked about last time. And here, uh, last time, there was a question as to whether this uh, Kamawachara Kusala Chita uh, must be with wisdom or whether it is possible without wisdom as well. So the answer is it must always be with wisdom. So there will be, um, uh, in this in this place, that it will be either for uh, Kamawachara Kusala Chita with wisdom or for uh, Kamawachara Kriya Chitta with wisdom. If the person is already an Arahat, and then later on, after attaining uh, enlightenment, then he start practicing the jhana and attain the first uh, jhana in, in that case, then these ones will be Kriya for him, but not uh, Kusala. So it is possible eight types of Chittas here, uh, which is for Kusala with wisdom or for uh, Kriya with wisdom. Okay. So, and here also for the jhana chitta, it will be, if it is for a person that is not a totally enlightened being, then it will be uh, depending on the jhana that he is first attaining. Uh, it could be a rupa vajara first jhana, second, third, fourth, or fifth, uh, or it can be a rupa vajara jhana, uh, kusala chitta first, second, or, or third, no? And, or if he is an arahan already, then it would be kriya in that case. Yeah, is that clear? Okay, all right. So that was the questions about whether they were, this is with wisdom. So yes, it is with wisdom. Okay, so and then we also have a, another questions concerning the, um, uh, the javanas here. So let's take a look. Among the jhana uh, mental processes, we have seen the first attainment process, the adhikamika jhana witi, uh, which is... Um, Mind door process, of course, the Manodo Arawajana, then we have the Parikama Upachara Anuloma Gotrabu and Jhana, and then we have the Bawanga. And we have also seen the Jhana absorption process, which are the Samapajana uh, Jhana Witi, which is uh, later on when the person, after first attaining the, the whichever Jhana it may be, then later on he or she wants to uh, attain that Jhana again and stay in that Jhana state for a longer period of time. And those type of uh, Jhana processes are called uh, in English, uh, we call it the absorption process, or uh, in uh, Pali, uh, Samapajana, or uh, Samapajana Jana Witi. So in this case, it will again uh, be uh, Manodo Arawa Jana, Mind or Averting Consciousness, Parikama, Preparation, Upachara, uh, Neighborhood, Anuloma, uh, Conformity, Gotrabu, the changing of lineage, then it will be jana, 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 chita, it will keep arising for the period of time that he decided to stay in that jana. And then uh, when he decides to come out of the jana or when the period of time is uh, uh, completed, then it will fall back to the Bawanga stream again. So this is the second type of uh, jana mental processes that we have looked at. And then we also have another type of process which are related to the jana, but it is not the jana process. It is actually the jhana reviewing process. So that's the uh, pacha vikana witi. In that case, it is a usual kamawachara mind door mental process. Uh, here, these javanas are only five of them. And then uh, it, it will be reviewing the jhana that the person has just attained. Say the person attained the first jhana, uh, for the first time, and then afterwards, then the jhana review in the jhana reviewing processes uh, in the process, he will be reviewing with these javanas. He will be reviewing the jhana factors. In the case of the first group of vachara jhana, the jhana factors will be five. Yeah, so vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata. So in this 
uh, Javanas, he will be uh, reviewing those jhana factors. So that's a usual uh, um, sense fear, mind door, uh, mental process, reviewing the jhana factors that has just been attained. Now, the question from last week was, uh, why is it only five Javanas here? So here um, I have been reading uh, some other um, uh, contents uh, explained by Seado Silananda Biwamsa, um, but uh, he did not specifically say um, why exactly there are five, but I, uh, from what I read, I think it is uh, connected with the Abhinya process that can happen later on. Those are the uh, Abhinya uh, is translated as direct knowledge and sometimes translated as a supernormal power. So those are the uh, sometimes called miracle or things like this uh, uh, extraordinary things that a person can um, can perform after he attained the highest jhana. Yeah. So uh, later on today, if we have time, I think we might be able to see those uh, processes as well. Then by the time it will become clear. So to attain those kind of uh, super uh, power, a person first, he must have the, um, the fifth uh, Rupa Vachara Jhana uh, first. Uh, he must have attained already. Then after attaining that, then he must be very um, uh, familiar with the Jhana. Then he has to further develop uh, again uh, for this, uh, in order to attain this special power. Then for those powers, then the, uh, later on we will see all the all the, the sequence of the process that has to the one uh, the, the person has to go through. First, he has to attain the ba a jhana basis, which is the fifth uh, rupa vachara jhana. Then he has to ha uh, attain the reviewing pro. And then he has to have a reviewing process. Then he has another mental process that is to, to determine what kind of uh, uh, superpower that he is going to perform. And then later on, then the, he he has to um, go in sequence uh, different kind of mental processes before that is possible but for um for that uh to be uh for that person to perform those kind of mir say miracle or superpower uh, he has to be fast so uh, for the reviewing process and other process here he cannot spend time on having seven javanas so he must do things very quickly in order for those uh, uh, uh superpower uh, in order to to uh go to those kind of um uh, attainments so therefore here instead of um uh, seven javanas there are only five and for the buddha it is said that it is only four javanas for those cases for the uh, abhinya, uh, during abhinya, before the, uh, before the abhinya, before the supernormal power, the, in the reviewing process, there's only four, jan, uh, four javanas. So anyway, when we get to that part, it might be a little bit clear, but I just wanted to let you know that for javanas, most of the time is uh, seven javanas, right? In a, a usual mental process. So it's usually seven, sometimes it could be six, and sometimes in some cases, like here, it is five. Uh, in the dying process also, actually, it's also five. So one day, uh, Ahmad also asked the question whether we will talk about more about the Javanas. And actually, uh, we can we can actually talk about more about the Javanas of how many of them arises, actually. Because in different processes, say in this Jhana reviewing process, it only arises five times. And for the Buddha, four times, because he has to be quick. The person has to be quick in order to perform the, um, later on, perform the supernormal power. So it could be because of that, then four or five. And for dying process, there are only five, but not because they have to be quick, but because the mind is very weak at that time. At that time, the uh, heart base um, of the person, the, the body is so weak, the base is also weak. So the person, the mind and body is also weak. So so for that uh, a specific process, only five javana will arise instead of the usual seven. So because of different reasons, sometimes it can vary. Now say here, usually the javanas, they are of the same type of, um, of um, chittas, right? For example, it, let's say in a normal mind or uh, process, if it is a kusala, uh, if one kusala javana arise, then following it, it will arise another six kusala uh, chitta. The same type of kusala chitta will arise in the same process, right? Usually they are of the same type. But in this jhana processes or the maga processes, they are, because they are special processes, they are a little bit different. Say this 
uh, first attainment, these four, they are the same type of the uh, kusalachita, uh, kamawachara kusalachita here. But then the next one is totally a different type of jhavana, right? It's a jhana, it's a jhana chitta. So in this case, uh, only one jhana chitta will arise and then it falls back to bawanga. So we may say, why it? Why only one, two, three, four, and five, then maybe it can be six, seven. Why uh, two jhana, like two or three jhana do not arise after that, right? So in that case, uh, in this case, it's because for the first attainment process, uh, this jhana, since the first person is the very first time for him to attain this kind of jhana, his jhana is still weak in a sense. So therefore, it does not have enough power to sustain and um, support another jhana chitta to arise right after it. Therefore, for uh, for this first attainment, only one jhana chitta arise and then it will fall back to the bawanga stream. But later on, when the person keeps practicing and practicing again and again this jhana, then he becomes very familiar with the jhana. And then the jhana also is stronger; it gains power. So, if later on in a later chapter we will study the uh, twenty four conditions, there is one condition that is called uh, the asewana. Uh, conditioned, which is the repetition condition. So this repetition condition is actually talking about the javanas specifically. So in this case, with this jhana is strong enough, so it has enough strength to support the next jhana to arise. And then it, it then this one again is strong enough, it supports the next one to arise. And then because they arise in repetition, then become stronger and stronger. So therefore, in these cases, uh, in these different cases, uh, sometimes uh, in the javanas, uh, there is only one, uh, sometimes there can be many, and sometimes there are five, sometimes it's four, so depending on the condition. Okay, so it's more or less about uh, the number of the uh, uh, javanas. Until here, is it? Uh, yes, edit. I just uh, wanted to ask if it's possible for uh, someone to get stuck in um, have <clears throat> uh, in the jhana attainment where it's only just one or two um, jhanas, uh, my moment, or uh, just several uh, and not for minutes or hours, for example. But, but what do you mean by get stuck? Well, not stuck, but um, in the beginning when they are developing it, right? Uh, when in the beginning when they are developing it, you mean the, for the samapajana processes? So after he attained it for the first time, so he actually already attained it for the first time. Then later on, when he will, when he will practice again and again, if he is not that skillful yet, then maybe the, the period of time that he can stay in that jhana could be maybe shorter or could be, uh, or he might not be so skillful uh, as to getting into that jhana very quickly and coming out very quickly. And all this needs, needs practice. So when he gets more and more familiar uh, with that jhana, then he becomes very skillful and he can get into that jhana uh, whenever he wants and come out very easily or depending on the time that, that he said, okay, I will stay in this, this jhana for three hours. So exactly three hours, then he will be in jhana. And after three hours, then um, another mind or process will arise and he will uh, emerge from that jhana. Yeah. So so uh, this uh, to become skillful is necessary uh, uh, in order for him to have good control of the jhana, because uh, uh, if you remember, uh, someone can lose a jhana, right? If a person attained a jhana and he never practiced again, and so he he's not skillful for that jhana again, then he might not be able to enter to that jhana again. Then he might have to uh, practice from the, like, again, uh, uh, from the very beginning and again, again, and he have to practice. Oops, sorry. I, by mistake, I pressed the button. Anyway, so, so yeah. Even if someone becomes very skillful in it uh, at uh, one point, they can regress back to like a beginner or even lo lose it completely. Uh, if he is very skillful already, then uh, it is not that easy to lose. But if he do not keep practicing, then it might then he might not be that skillful again. And just just, just like riding a bicycle. 
then once we know how to ride a bicycle, but then if we don't practice, then next time we ride, we get on the bicycle, we might kind of not, like know how, but then we are like kind of a little shaky and we, we're not sure. And if we don't practice for, for many years, then we might not know how to ride it again. And But if we keep riding, uh, then we'll become more and more skillful. And if we, oh, um, um, how do you say, like, uh, 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 with determination, then we keep practicing. Um, how, how do you say, which, what is the, the word that uh, to be used? Um, like intentionally, yes. Intentionally, you practice more than maybe from the first jhana, then the person get to the second and to the third and to the fourth, then one can progress in, in the jhana as well. So it really depends. So uh, if you, for example, had... Um attain jhana in uh, let's say a pre uh, previous life um it, it is it possible to attain jhana in the in the next life without uh, knowing what you're doing or without knowing what's what's happening mm, that's um if if a person has attained jhana in a previous life immediate previous life then in this lifetime he will be reborn as a brahma so for that, for sure, he will know what he's doing, right? So let's say if we're talking about a few lifetimes ago or um, or Brahma uh, became uh, reborn as a Deva and then reborn again as a human, or so it's some lifetimes ago, right? So in that case, in that case, then if a person has attained before, then he might be, uh, he might have um, the potential to attain it easier, than a person that ha that has never attained before, but uh, but uh, I think no jhanas are attained without knowing what one is doing. Like it cannot be like by luck. Oh, I suddenly attained jhana even without knowing it. Well, that that might not be possible. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, yes, Amar. So, uh, for like you know the person who hasn't attended the jhana but uh, doing the meditation uh, the jhana would be still seven right yes and 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 uh, uh, and they will have just the one kind of chitta right uh, to, that will be uh, kusala kamawachara kusala chitta kusala kamawachara mm. chitta one okay yeah. the, the people like us who hasn't attended the jhana but we do meditate so we we, we will have only seven javanas, right? Not five. In each process. Yeah, in each process. So it will be because the process is you microscopic, no? So billions of chitas arise and passes away in every moment, in every blink of the eye, yeah? So mm. let's say you practiced uh, one minute or 10 minutes of meditation. So there will be billions and billions of billions of uh, chitas that arise, billions of javanas in different processes will arise in the mind of that person. And then if mm. the person is practicing, uh, vipassana or practicing uh, samatha meditation, then those will be uh, kamavachara kusala chitta, no? Just the kamavachara kusala chitta, okay. Mm. Yeah. So if that person is an arahan and he is mm, uh, practicing or he is meditating, that will be kriya chitta in the same and way. And the person who attends the first jhana, all right, first moment, mm -hmm. will that person will know that he has attended the jhana and be able to go into uh, samapati? Yes, immediately, yes. Immediately after that? Well, after the first attainment, uh, what happens is that the person, he will review the jhana. So this jhana reviewing process will happen after the first attainment process. Maybe some bawangas in between uh, will, will happen. I don't know how many. And then later on, he will have a jhana reviewing process. So in this process, it will be a, a mind door process and he will uh, review the jhana uh, factor that he has just attained. So if it is say the first jhana, then he will he will know because he 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 knows that he has attained the first jhana and the jhana factors that are there will be um uh piti sukai kagata. No, so he will have the reviewing process. So for sure he knows. And later on, he will, if he practice again, he take up the meditation object again, and then he practice, then he can enter into the absorption pr uh, process. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, okay. but uh, yeah, yeah. User, user said that if you attend the jhana, it will uh, strictly go to Brahma world, right? But 
is that a case like if you like you, you attend the jhana but uh, during dying process if you if you are not meditating we, he can still burn as a human right well if a person he w- Okay, I have to clarify here. I say if the person, he attained first jhana or whatever jhana right. in this lifetime right, as a right. human being, and then he yeah. maintained this jhana uh, intact during his lifetime, then after he died, during the no, dying... No, I, I'm trying, yeah, yeah, that may be possible, but during dying moment, if he's not in that uh, meditative mode, uh, I don't think uh, he will go to Brahma, right? He can still burn as a human. No, because actually a dying process is a special process and no one die in a jhana process. So it is not possible for a person to be in jhana and die. He must emerge from the jhana and then the dying process can happen. Okay, okay. So so it is different. Okay, so that's uh, uh, about um, the last time we were about what we talked about jhana and mental processes. And last week, we also actually talked about the maga processes. <clears throat> so today we will uh, start with the maga process. And uh, as revision, we'll just mention a little bit uh, about the uh, things that we have looked at. And also uh, we'll introduce new things. Okay, so in the maga mental process, after a person pra- practiced a vipassana for some time, then when his vipassana is mature enough and all the conditions of the noble eightfold path, the eight uh, maganga, the uh, path factors, when it is all complete, then the maga mental process will arise. In that case, uh, it will be a process a little bit similar with the jhana process. So we have manodo arawa jhana, mind or averting consciousness. Then we have parikama upachara anuloma and gotrabu. Uh, again, so preparation to access, to conformity and changing of lineage. But now here, this gotrabu is a little bit different from the jhana one because here the changing lineage is really a total change from the mundane uh, from a mundane person to become a noble person so after this uh, process he will become an ariya he's not a putu jhana anymore so after gotrabu immediately maga chitta will arise followed by two fala chitta and it will fall back to the bawanga stream so this is the usual and maga process so this say this is the first um, attainment the sotapati maga the first stage of enlightenment so this will be sotapati maga sotapati fala uh, sotapati fala and the process comes in this way now let's take a look at the object uh, of the of these different processes now when one practice vipassana meditation uh, before attaining maga so there are millions and millions or even billions of thought processes arise in the person in the mind of the person so these processes while practicing we actually this process these javanas they take um uh, mind and matter uh, as or conditioned phenomena as object right the object of vipassana is mind and mind or mind matter, no? So conditioned phenomena. So when we practice vipassana, we take this kind of object and we try to see the impermanence nature, the um, the dukkha, uh, uh, the non satisfactory nature, and the non self nature of uh, of the thing of this thing of mind and matter, and then we understand uh, their causes and then how they arise and disappear and so on. So. While we are still practicing the javanas here, the object being taken by this javana during practice are actually mind and matter. So they are sense via, the, all these processes are sense via mind or processes during vipassana. Now, when it uh, when the all the uh, conditions are mature, then the maga process will arise. Here, bawanga will be more or less, no? so maybe maybe more here okay so in the maga process what is the object of this now in the maga process for the first one two three chitta for these three parikama upachara and anuloma it actually still take the same object as the vipassana object so mind and matter when the, what, what the person has, has been contemplating on and from gotrabu maga and fala it will take nibbana as object so this is a special process where in one single process, uh, there are uh, different objects uh, in the Javana moments.
So usually the, in one single process, the objects are the same, the types of titans are the same, but because these are special processes, it is a little bit different here. So the first four cheetahs here, they are actually sent via Kusala Chita with Jnana, always with wisdom. And then the other two, Maga and Fala, they are Lokutara Chitas, Supramandan Chitas. So this is the uh, uh, types of Chitas and the objects uh, being taken by these Chitas in the Maga process. Okay, so the Maga Chita, uh, it is very, very powerful. So uh, we also talked about it last week that it will only arise one time in, in throughout samsara, no, throughout samsara. Once a person, once a sotapati maga arises in a person, then phala will immediately follow. And then this person will never become a, a mundane person again. He be, he's an ariya uh, already from that moment. So there is no returning. So it's no, no going back and it will never be lost. Jhana can be lost, as we have been talking right now. If you don't keep practicing, it will be lost. But maga cannot be lost. This wisdom, once you gain it, you always it will always be there with the person and it will not be lost. And another interesting thing about this maga is that we always say that maga destroy or eradicate the defilements, right? But technically, during the moment of maga or during this this at uh, this um, uh, path um, process, there are no kilesas there. No defilements are present, right? So, it, so what does it actually destroy? So it actually does not destroy the uh, kilesas or the defilements that are present at the time because there is no, no defilements during that moment. But it actually destroy the latent potentiality or liability of any unwholesome, uh, of well, depending on the stage of enlightenment, but of that specific uh, defilement. So it does not. So it, uh, for it to arise, no. So it the it destroy the uh, potentiality for that defilement to ever arise again in the mind, in the mind stream of that person. So that is what it actually eradicates the potential of that. So the potential. Uh, let's say here the matches and we'll use this icon because fire is not actually there. So what it's destroyed is the possibility of making fire. Right? So Maga is so strong that with only one time arising, it can eradicate totally the, the latent potency or liability of that specific defilement for it to arise again. So what we meant by uh, enlightenment is this moment of maga, actually. Okay, so for defilements to be abandoned, there are actually three levels. The first level is with kusala actions. When we are doing uh, um, kusala, so say we are uh, learning the Abhidhamma, we are paying homage to the Buddha, we are helping others, uh, we are doing uh, good things, at that moment, our kusala or defilements are not arising in the mind of that person at that moment. So with kusala actions, uh, we are temporarily or momentarily, actually, sorry, momentarily abandoning those uh, defilements, kilesas. So that is the first uh, type of abandonment, first level. Then later on, if we practice uh, uh, meditation, so with jhana or with vipassana, uh, when the mind is practiced uh, in that in, in jhana or in samatha meditation, in vipassana meditation, at that mo in those moments, also kilesas are not arising in the mind at that time. There are kusala minds are arising. So in that moment, uh, the defilements are being abandoned temporarily. So during that period of time, no kilesas will arise. But still, with these two types of abandonment, there are still uh, potentialities for defilements to arise because they are not totally eradicated. So now the third level of abandonment is actually with maga. So it is called a total abandonment. Uh, in Pali, it's called samucheda. So that is when uh, this defilement, the possibility of it to arise again is totally being cut off. So samucheda, this Pali word means cutting off. So uh, the possibility of it to arise, totally cut off. So it, it is a real total abandonment. So we have these three levels of abandonment of and defilements. Okay, 
Now, in the maga process, the fala moment are actually the result of maga. So in this process, it's very interesting because cost and effect usually happen in a different moment, right? In a different time. So let's say we do kusala now and later, sometime later, then the, the result of this kusala that we have just done might give result when conditions are favorable. Yeah, so they happened in a different time. But in for maga and fala, it happens immediately. Immediately after maga, maga is the cause, then fala arises immediately after it in the same process, just without any uh, uh, anything in between, no intermediate anything. So maga immediately fala. So cause and effect immediately happen. Now, do you remember uh, the attributes of the Dhamma? Uh, when we recite, suakato bhagavata dhammo sanditiko akaliko. Yeah. So when we recite that, akaliko, this akaliko, actually, uh, it is translated sometimes as timeless or without delay like that. Yeah. So this akaliko, um, just with the English translation like timeless or like that, we is not easy to understand. But what it really wants to say is there is no waiting for a result. There is no intermediate between uh, between uh, maga and fala. What it this akaliko it refers actually to maga, meaning after immediately after maga past uh, maga uh, chita ceased, fala chita will arise immediately. There is nothing in between maga and fala. So in that sense, it is called without time or timeless or no delay. So this akaliko uh, is an attribute of the Dhamma, specifically referring to maga and fala. So when maga is attained, fala result will immediately arise. There is nothing in between that, uh, no waiting time. It's not like once uh, maga arrives, then the person will attain uh, uh, enlightenment later. It's not like that, it's immediately. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, cost and effect, one half happened uh, immediately after another. Okay, so we see the function of maga is to totally cut off the potentiality of uh, defilement to ever arise again in the mind stream of that person, yeah? So what is the function of fala? Now, there is an example. If maga is to extinguish the fire, then fala, the uh, function of fala is the further tranquilizing uh, for the further tranquilization of defilements is the function of fala. So maga puts out or extinguish the fire and fala is like it puts some more water to the fire that is already uh, off, that is already extinguished to make sure that it can never burn again. So that's the function of uh, the two fala chitta that arise immediately after maga. Okay, S let's see. Okay, so for the MAGA process, we also have this uh, average faculty and the keen faculty. But of course, for a person to, at our, again, emphasize that for a person that already capable to attain uh, Nibbana, attain uh, um, uh, MAGA and FALA, it's no usual person anymore. Yeah, His wisdom must be uh, enough, uh, must be uh, uh, he must have a very high level of wisdom. So although we say average is actually very uh, not that not the usual average that we can that we imagine. Yeah. Okay. So for an average person, then it will be parikama upachara nuloma gotrabu and maga fala fala. So this will be the usual process. And if the person is a tika panya pugala. So a very keen faculty, very sharp-minded person. Then in that case, parikama, the preparation will not arise. It's not necessary for that person. Immediately after Manodawara Vajana will be Upachara Anuloma Gotrabu. In that case, uh, for seven Javana, we still have one space. So one more fala will arise for that, for this person. So this will be the maga process for a person uh, with a keen faculty, Tika Panya Pugala. Okay, now, as we are all familiar with uh, the four stages of enlightenment, we have uh, Sotapati Maga Fala, and we have Sakadagami, and then we have Anagami and Arahata, no? 
So four stages of enlightenment. That means altogether there are four types of manga processes. Now, the first one that we saw is the first um, Sotapati manga process. For, for a person that attained um, enlightenment for the very first time, the, this chitta here will be the Gotrabu chitta, meaning changing lineage, right? So from a Putujana, from mundane, uh, worldly person, he becomes a noble person, a Nariya. So here, this Gotrabu will arise here. Now for a Sotapati uh, person, uh, well, for Sotapana, then he keep practicing vipassana and he may attain the sakadagami maga, yeah, the second stage of enlightenment. Now, when he attained the second stage of enlightenment, he does not have to change lineage again because he is already an Ariya, he's already a noble person. So this uh Gotrabu will ha have another name here. It is not called Gotrabu anymore, it's called Bodana. This Bodana is uh, it means cleansing or purification, meaning he he uh, further cleansed his, his mind or further purified his mind in order to attain the second stage of enlightenment. So therefore here for the second, uh, for the Sakadagami Maga uh, mental process, it will be Parikama, Upachara, Anuloma and Vodana. Then Maga and Fala will arise. Yeah, okay, because he's already a noble person, so it's not necessary to change lineage anymore. And uh, in the same way for Anagami and, and Arahata, it will be the same. So, but the Maga, of course, is different, right? So Wadana after Wadana, for an, uh, a person to attain a Sakadagami Maga, this will be Sakadagami Maga, or for a person, for the Sakadagami to attain anagami, then this will be anagami maga. And for an anagami to attain arahata, it will be arahata. Now here we have to um, remember and be careful that for any person to attain the enlightenment, it, he must always go through these four stages. So there's no jumping. Sometimes uh, we read in the suttas, if we do not study the Abhidhamma and we read the suttas, we might uh, read that, oh, this person, he after listening to the Buddha's uh, discourse, then he attained arahaship, right? So we might think that, oh, so after listening to the discourse, discourse immediately this uh, arahata maga uh, mental process arised in him, right? We might uh, we might think that he, he can attain arahat Arahaship without going through Sakada, uh, Sotapanna, Sakadagami, and Anagami. But technically, it is not possible. So what happened to this person in, in mentioned in the Sutta, actually, after he uh, uh, he practiced, well, actually, after after when he is listening to the Buddha, what, what we imagine happening in his mind is that he has been listening. While listening, he has been contemplating. He must practice. It's not possible to just listen to something and attain enlightenment. He must practice. So while listening to the Buddha's discourse, then he might be contemplating on Nama and Rupa. So while he contemplates and contemplates, so he's actually listening while he's practicing Vipassana. Then when he practice, practice, keep practicing, at some point, um, a Sotapati Maga uh, mental process happened in him. Then after that, then he already became a Sotapanna. And after that, because mental process passes very quickly in the mind. yeah. So after that process, then he keep listening to the Buddha's words and he keep contemplating. And then later contemplating, contemplating, he keeps practicing Vipassana. And after that, at some point, uh, the Sakadagami Maga uh, mental process happened in him. So and then he attained the second stage of enlightenment in the same sitting. Yeah, while he is listening to the Buddha's discourse, maybe within one hour or I don't know how long. Then after that, if he continues uh, practicing and contemplating on Nama and Rupa while, while listening to the Buddha, then later on, uh, he, he keep practicing Vipassana, no meaning. Then at some point, Anagami Maga mental process must happen in him. Then he, after that process, he became an Anagami. Then he keep continue practicing and an Arahata Maga uh, mental process finally arised in him and he became an Arahata. So if we read in the Sutta that after listening to the Buddha's discourse, the person became an Arahant, uh, in his mind, in the mental process of this person, he must go through all this, uh, what we just said, the Vipassana practice, first stage, Vipassana practice, second stage, Vipassana practice, third stage, Vipassana practice, fourth stage, like that. 
and it's not possible to jump. Say a person is Sotapanna, and uh, then uh, later he practiced and he attained Arhata immediately. That's not possible. It must go through stage by stage. So uh, since mental process is very fast, uh, chitta pa- arise and passes in the mind, billions of chittas arise and passes in the mind in a single blink of an eye. So many things, uh, many, many, many processes can happen. Some person, depending on the person, he might attain uh, all the four stages of enlightenment, as we just said, in one sitting, in one go, like the Buddha himself. Yeah, uh, when uh, when the Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree, then he contemplated, and then he attained the first stage, then second stage, third stage, and fourth stage of enlightenment, or in the the, the same sitting. And some other person, he might attain the uh, first stage of enlightenment, and then later on, like uh, say the Venerable Ananda, he attained uh, the first stage of enlightenment, and then later on, uh, he kept practicing, uh, but he cannot attain uh, a higher stage uh, yet. Then later on, later on, after some time, after some period of time, even months or years, then he attained the second or the third or fourth stage, etc. No, So depending on the person, it can be different, but it is possible uh, to go really quick, like, let's say in one sitting to attain the full uh, enlightenment. That's also possible, like the case of the Buddha. All right. Let's see. Okay, so after uh, Maga and the Fala, two times or three times of Fala arise, then the process will subside and will fall back to Bawanga stream. And then from that moment on, the person is considered, if he has attained the first stage, then he is also considered the Sotapanna and uh, the second stage, then uh, and etc. No, yes, Ahmad, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about there's something called Chula Sotapanna, right? Is yes. There a- Mind process for that as well, or uh... um, Achula uh, Sotapanna actually he has not attained uh, Sotapati Maga and Fala yet technically, right. right? Right. So therefore, no Maga process will arise in him, but his understanding is a uh, uh, very very close to uh, Sotapanna. So therefore, uh, the process that has happened in him is only the Vipassana practicing process. So still Kamawachara Kusala, Kamawachara, uh, the Vipassana process, the usual Kamawachara mind door process. There's no special process for that. No special processes. But because he has been practicing Vipassana and he has been gaining wisdom, no? Although uh, not all the conditions are fulfilled for the Maga process to arise, but he's very close. Uh, his wisdom is already very high to a certain level. Therefore, he's called a Chula Sotapanna, um, he, he translated into English like a small Sotapanna. Yeah. Chula is small in, in, uh, in Pali, uh, but no, ma- no, actually no Maga process has ever arised in him yet. And the second question is: Once one attend the sotapanna, sotapanna, he becomes sota sotapanna, right? So, what is uh, his uh, uh, destination? Mm. Yes, um, it it will. Uh, after after this, we will go there. Yeah, we will wait a little bit, and we will go there. Okay. Yes, uh, edit. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, from um, Sotapanna to Sakadagami is uh, much quicker than uh, from Sakadagami to Anagami, for example. Um, what? Why? Why is that? So, is it is it related to ex? Um, I guess uh, entering the creation attainment. Uh, or is it related to uh, being more ex- expert in the jhanas? Mm. First of all, um, first of all, the an attainment of enlightenment is is not the same as uh, jhana. So. We, we can say that it it's uh, not related. Well, I cannot say it's not, um, it's basically, maybe I can say it has nothing to do with jhana for attainment of, uh, of enlightenment. Uh, attainment of jhana can be a great support 
to the attainment of enlightenment because mind is very concentrated. The defilements have already been suppressed. It, so it's easier for the mind to concentrate uh, um, uh, if a person has jhana, but is not a requisite. So it uh, it's not um, it's not totally it's not directly related because you are saying that whether it is related with jhana, no. So up uh, up, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just um, so the only way I can see it's related uh, is the, um, when we are we were like um, enumerating how a person could uh, become a sotapanna through first jhana, second jhana, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that a relation though? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's go back to your original, like the, the first question that you asked first. And you said that you have heard that um, that it is easier for a person to attain, um, like from the first stage to second stage is easier than the, from second stage to third stage, right? Okay, that's what you said originally. First of all, I have to admit that I have not heard about this before. So, um, but if there are some saying, then I can uh, imagine why they say so. I, I would imagine that it is because of the uh, defilements that are being eradicated in the different stages. Because... Yes, uh, I just want to mention it's in the Manual of Insight. Uh, mm. uh, in which part? Maybe I'll look at it later. I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right. So I imagined it is because of the type of defilements that are being eradicated. Um, maybe I should skip uh, to that those slides first and then we'll come back to this content. Just give me one second. Okay, so let's take a look of this one first and then we'll go to Ama's question as well as edit uh, what we are discussing right now, okay? All right. So let's say the first stage of enlightenment, uh, this content, we have actually looked at it before, but I thought it is good uh, to uh, go through it again as a revision. So we are more familiar with, with the content. Now for the first stage of enlightenment, uh, Sota Pati, uh, Sota means a stream, and here it means actually the noble path. Uh, Pati means reaching for the first time. So sotapana actually means a person who has reached for the first time the stream, they like say entering the noble path. Yeah. So stream entry, yeah, it is translated as stream entry usually, meaning that once the person has entered the noble path, he has entered the stream, there is no going back. The all the stream and river always lead to the sea. Yeah. So he will arrive, arrive to Arahat Arahaship for sure. So uh, that, that is what it means. He entered already the noble path. Now, for uh, Sotapati Maga, uh, sense, desire, and ill will is greatly uh, reduced by the power of Maga, yeah? Because he has generated enough wisdom. And this Maga, the Sotapati Maga, uh, greatly weakens sense, desire, and ill will, but is not totally eradicated. What is totally being eradicated by Sotapati Maga is Diti, wrong view. So a person will not have wrong view anymore uh, concerning the Dhamma, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Uh, and also um, this... Uh, Wichikicha, the doubt, doubt will also be totally eradicated. So these two will totally be eradicated. And the person, it is said that um, he will never be able to break the five precepts again. So because his sense, desire, and ill will, uh, it's, it's um, uh, so much reduced, and then his wrong view and doubt is totally eradicated, then he will know that keeping the precepts is the right thing to do. Yeah? He will always be keeping the five precepts. He will not be able to commit uh, anything, uh, uh, to, I mean, to break uh, the five precepts. Now, talking about the destination, what Ahmad was asking, uh, for a Sotapanna, he will never be reborn in the four woeful states again. That is because uh, he has no more mental defilement that are strong enough to lead him uh, to the woeful states. So uh, it is said that with Sotapati Maga, the, the door uh, to woeful state is totally closed. A person will only be reborn into uh, the Sugati, meaning the good destination. So that means from human plane 
above human, the deva, and if we practice uh, jhana, then maybe fine material and non-material uh, realm as well. So it is said that if a person who has attained uh, sotapati um, uh, maga, the, if he does not attain the higher attainment, higher stage of enlightenment during that lifetime or in the next lifetime, uh, the maximum time then he will, uh, for him to attain arahaship will be seven lifetimes. So he in within seven lifetime he will attain surely arhataship. Uh, that is uh, what is said about the destination of Sotapanna. Yeah, is that okay, Amar? Yes, but uh, seven lifetimes. Those lifetimes depends on where where he uh, he is born as, right? So basically, if he is born in the higher realm, then it, it it can be a very, very long time, right? It can be a very long time, but still it is a lifetime. So maximum seven. It can be extremely long if he so, keeps no, my The question was, uh, I I was wondering, like, uh, chances of burning, re reborn as a human is uh, is a high possibility? or uh, That's what I think uh, one would prefer, right? Uh, and, because human lifetimes are short, and then it's a seven lifetime is less than like let's say you go, you like you know born back to the higher plane, which is like you know kalpas and kalpas. The, you will miss probably even millions and millions of Buddha, right? <laughs> uh, now, now it really depends because for Asotapanna, we have to remember that uh, he had a uh, sense desire is not eradicated totally yet. Remember, so it is right. possible that uh, that Sotapanna still have attachment to uh, life of a Deva, life of a Brahma or etc. So maybe he will very much be happy to live a Brahma life. That is possible also. So uh, it is very hard to say, uh, like whether the person will prefer to be a human again. Right. But I would say um, it, it would be uh if it was me, let's say, if it was me, I would prefer to be reborn into the Deva realm in this, in, even if I was a Sotapanna. Because in the human world, we have to worry about like uh, getting sick and then we have to worry about finding a job, getting money and all this trouble. No, but you're, you're talking about the short uh, short distance to get to Nibbana than longer distance. You're talking about like, you know, uh, probably like if it's going back to human, you can, you can attend in probably, you know, uh, couple like you know 100 years but if you reborn back to the higher plane you're talking about like you know <laughs> almost incalculable time right um yeah but i mean it's it's really it's yeah. really depends so those, those the... se seven life uh, counts as like you know uh, uh one lifetime or of each plane right so you you are you 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 attend the sotapanna let's say in this life as a human, next life you attend in the uh, higher and Brahma road for example the highest plane that's a one lifetime right mm -hmm. so you have to you have to basically die in the Brahma and and fall back right that's another lifetime no, right so no you're no 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 it's not a must. Because max lifetimes is a maximum. That means if that means the person will live a maximum of seven lifetimes. If a person attains Sotapati Maga as a human being in this lifetime, next lifetime okay. he is reborn into the Brahma realm, he might attain Arahaship there. Okay. Then in one time, then in one lifetime he's done. Uh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't have to live the full seven lifetimes, yeah. So that that we're talking about a maximum. Yeah. Is that so okay? then, like, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, if if he, he is born in the higher plane, he doesn't have to spend like you know the entire lifetime in no. Brahma world. Even like in few moments, he should be able to attain, right? If I if cannot he, if say he that he should be able to, but he might be able to. Yeah, he might be able to attain in even in few moments. Yeah, a if few moments means like you know, not not the like I'm talking about kalpas. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I'm worried about the going back to Brahma and staying there for kalpas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, just remember this uh, seven is a maximum, so it's not necessary that like, he must live seven lifetimes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Edit. Okay. 
Uh, I just wanted to ask if the uh, what the Sotapati Maga eradicates your list is complete because uh, I I kind of like um, miss the um, Sila Bata Paramasa. Mm -hmm. That is included in the DT. Okay, uh, that was the question, uh, and also an additional two things. One is. Uh, I think we uh, mentioned that uh, remorse mm -hmm. as uh, Chetasika is uh, removed and uh, or eradicated. And how about uh, fear? No, uh, fear is dosa. So so dosa yes. is not totally eradicated yet. Uh, so, but uh, as a as an experience, as like uh, fear, isn't isn't that also? very diminished like uh it, yes you know, uh, both loba and dosa is highly diminished but fear is still possible then um i think so uh let me yeah, uh, fear uh, is completely me... removed uh in the anagami only right even sakagami the fear will be still there right um if because fear is actually dosa yeah Right. So, so dosa is totally eradicated in the anagami, anagami in only, that yeah. time. So, but uh, whether um, because fear is not a separated chetasika, so I am not sure whether it is it is uh, like uh, uh, whether this part of dosa cannot arise or like maybe gross, uh, very gross type of dosa, like uh, like furiously angry. Maybe 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 it will not arise in, with him, but still dosa is dosa. Yeah. So I will ask my teacher if there is any differentiation in this sense. So, no, there is a, like a sutta, right? The, the, the example of chemical. Um... Uh, right that where like you know he, his uh, I mean uh, his teacher was uh, not not like you know around yet but he he had a fear right he yeah that was he a, shown the a, elephant a, image to the elephant exactly right mm -hmm. so yeah so he was at the time he was uh, satkagami only he was not even anagami right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he felt afraid. He know that he is not totally enlightened yet. No, from that sutta we can also uh, see examples. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay, Edith? Uh, oh, sorry, Charana. Someone <laughs> just came to my phone. It's but, okay. Uh, yes, I I uh, uh, can listen. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's about uh, the uh, Sotapati Maga. Now let's go to the second stage of enlightenment. Now for the second stage, Anagami, uh, oh, sorry, Sakadagami, Sakadagami uh, uh, stage. Saka means once, Agami means the one who comes back. So it's translated as once returner. Yeah. So now here the question is, once returner, once returning, return or come back to what? Yeah. So here, this return means coming back to the sense sphere or coming back to the plane where the person attained the second stage of enlightenment. This returning means returning to sense sphere or the plane where he or she got enlightened, got the second stage of enlightened, enlightenment. So let's say if a person... Um, he attained uh, Sakadagami Maga uh, as a human being in this lifetime. Then he passed away and he became a Dewa, let's say. So after this lifetime, well, he may, he may be able to get enlightened. Uh, I mean, get uh, the third stage and fourth stage of enlightenment in this lifetime, in the next lifetime, in the Deva realm, it is possible. But if he does not get uh, enlightenment during that lifetime, then he might be reborn again, uh, after dying uh, as the deva, then he might be reborn again as a human being. And in that human being lifetime, so it's once returning to where he attained the second stage of enlightenment. No, So in that stage, in that time, then he might attain the third stage of enlightenment and the, uh, maybe the fourth stage as well. So that returning means returning either coming back to the sand sphere or to the plane where he attained enlightenment. Okay, so uh, that's for that's for uh, 
the uh, sakada gami once returning. So once returning doesn't uh, necessarily mean mean one lifetime because if in the case he's returning to the plane where he got enlightened, so it means that uh, one lifetime then he should already attain her in the deva realm that he was reborn to. But if he did not attain that, then he will come back to human life, human plane again. So that's two two lifetimes. Yeah. So once returning does not mean uh, one lifetime, but meaning once returning once to the sense sphere or to the plane where he or she got the second stage of enlightenment okay now for the uh, concerning the uh, defilements here uh, for the sakadagami maga actually no uh, further uh, new defilements are totally eradicated in this stage sense desire and ill will are again greatly reduced so I imagined uh, what Edith was saying previously, because there are no new defilements that are being uh, eradicated. So I imagine that's because of that. Then people might say that uh, from the first stage to the second stage, it is easier to attain because it is to further uh, uh, reduce the defilement that uh, that they have already greatly reduced. Right. So it's the sense, the yes, desire and you will now. For the third stage of enlightenment, uh, this sense, desire, and ill will will be totally eradicated. So maybe because of that, then from the second to the third, in order to totally eradicate sense, fear, uh, sense desire, and ill will, it might be a bigger step. So I imagined, I would imagine that might be the reason that they say that why it is a little bit more difficult. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but um, that's what come to mind. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the third stage of enlightenment, anagami. Now, an here, uh, these Pali words, if we cut it into different parts to understand it, an means not, agami means the one who comes back. So uh, anagami means non-returning. Now again, non-returning or not coming back to what? Yeah. So here, this not returning means not coming back to the sense sphere at all. It means that if a person, he attained uh, the third stage of enlightenment as a non-returner in the human plane, then if he passed away without attaining arhaship, then he will be reborn into uh, the fine material plane or the non-material plane. He will, because he will not uh, uh, be reborn into the Kamawachara, the sense fear anymore. Uh, that is because for uh, anagami, uh, for the anagami maga, uh, sense, desire, and ill will have been totally eradicated with this uh, uh, third stage of enlightenment, with this anagami maga, no? So without sense, desire, surely he will not be reborn into the sense realm. So logically, uh, he will um, be reborn into the fine material plane or non-material plane. So for anagami, usually, uh, because the mind uh, is without sense, desire, and ill will anymore. So it is very easy for them to attain the jhana, actually. Because sense, desire, and ill will uh, are, the, are two of the uh, biggest hindrances, right? So without these two, totally eradicated. So for them to attain jhana will be much easier. So we're very easy. So for an anagami, uh, he will um, be he will attain jhana and he will be returned into the fine material world or non-material world. Yes, Amar. So uh, for anagami, I think. Uh, uh... He has to attend the jhana as well, right? Uh, otherwise, he will not be possible to, right? So he has to attend uh, uh, fifth and above jhana, right? As well. Uh, Any kind of jhana. Yeah, usually the, the anagami, as I just said right now, that because sense, uh, desire, and you will are uh, totally eradicated, the, these two are actually one, uh, two of the five hindrances no, for jhana. So it, it is... that, like, you know, he hasn't attended jhana, so is there a possibility to, like, to suppose, like, he, he attended anagami, but he hasn't attended jhana? Um, Before he die, what... he will surely attain jhana. Okay, during during the dying moment, he will probably attend the jhana. Right? Not during the dying moment, before the dying moment. Before the dying moment. Before yeah. The dying moment. Yeah. So and before also, he... I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah. makes sense. So and also like uh, in um, 
fine material and the non material plane they are they are like about uh, 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 16 and 420 right the anagami has a special place right special yes yes yeah, sudawasa yeah, um, most movie, of right? the time mo not not only most of the no? time anagami will be reborn into the sudawasa most of the time but there are also sometimes that some anagami if they uh, prefer to be reborn into another uh, um, fine or non material realm it is possible if they if they wish to do so it is possible but usually they are reborn into the sudawasa and uh, so in other realm is is there like uh, i mean will he have a memory how to practice again or uh, you know Yes, once once the, a person has attained enlightenment, uh, whichever whichever uh, uh, stage it may be, even sotapanna, if a sotapanna is uh, reborn into a non-material being, a non-material realm, he will not have eye, he will not have ear, he will not be able to see the Buddha, he will not be able to listen to the Dhamma, but it doesn't matter because he already know the way. He already entered the stream. He knows how to practice and he will continue so his, there. Uh, his me memory of the practice will carry over, right? Yes, this his wisdom will not pass away. He will not. The wisdom will not get lost. He will. Uh, he will continue. Uh, the, the mind stream will continue. So uh, it is uh, not important uh, for a person who has already attained enlightenment. Where he, I mean, which realm uh, he is reborn into? Because it's always a good realm, no? And anywhere he can practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Okay, so let's go to the fourth stage of enlightenment. That's the Arahata, final stage. Now the word um, Arahata comes from Ari and Han. Now Ari means enemy, and here the enemies are actually the mental defilements, right? And Han means to kill or to destroy. So uh, Arahata uh, uh, is one who has destroyed or eliminated or eradicated all all mental defilements, so everything, all defilements. And he has already eradicated the potential of any kind of defilements to ever arise again. So that is called the Arahata Maga. Uh, uh, I, I mean, that is called the Arahaship, Arahata. And for the Arahata Maga, it will um, eliminate or eradicate all kinds of uh, leftover, all the defilements, no? which are the attachment to fine or non-material uh, world. Then we have mana, conceit, restlessness, which are uh, uh, now when we study Chetasika, we, know, we knew that it has, um, uh, it is associated with all kinds of akusala, no? as well as delusion, moha, these two are universal akusala, Chetasika. No? So these two will also be totally eradicated. So no more of all this. And that is, um, now that is a fully, really complete uh, of the Vipassana practice. And the samsara will be no more for him. Because for any other person that he will not be reborn again, for any other person that has not attained arahaship yet, then he will still be reborn in samsara for a certain period of time until he attained the final attainment. No, so only with arahata maga the samsara is totally uh, breaked. So that's like uh, what the Buddha said when he got totally enlightened that the holy life has been lived. What has to be done has been done. Yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, fourth stage of enlightenment, total enlightenment. All right. Okay, so uh, until here, uh, all good? Uh, yes, uh, edit. I was just wondering uh, where, uh, like, uh, during the enlightenment uh, stages, where uh, would a person... Um, eradicate moral uh, shamelessness and uh, um, and the last moral because shame. those are those are uh, arahata maga because that is the universal uh, chetasika right so if it is yes. like universal yes. Akusala, Akusala, Universal Chetasika so with whatever type of uh, Akusala they are always there so yes. therefore it's it just a the last one. It wasn't mentioned, and only only um, only yes. uh, delusion and 
the restlessness was mentioned. So I was just like, where where did we get rid of the the other ones? But yeah, it makes sense if it's universal. Then mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, let's take a break of uh, five minutes. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Okay, so, so far we have talked about the uh, four stages of enlightenment, and now we are going to see some other kinds of processes which are related. So let's go. Let's go to the Pachewakana uh, Witi. That's the five reviewing process uh, processes that happens after a person immediately after a person attained enlightenment. Now, after the Maga Witi, uh, there are different kinds of processes that are called the Pachewakana Witi. The five reviewing process will uh, immediately follow. So let's take a look. So here, let's, this is the path. Um, uh, process, let's say the first Sotapati um, meant um, the first Sotapati Maga process. Yeah. So Parikama Pachara Nulama Gotrabu, uh, Sotapati Maga, Sotapati Fala Fala, then uh, Baonga Baonga, then we fall back to Baonga stream, then maybe more or less Baonga will happen here. Then a mind door, Kama uh, Pachara mind door mental process will arise here. And here, uh, this process is called the Pachewekana Witi. For the first reviewing process, these Javanas will review the Maga that has just been attained. So immediately after the person attained enlightenment, the next process will be a mind door process that review that Maga Chitta, that review that Maga that has just already been attained. After that process, uh, then there will be a second reviewing process. It will now review the phala. So Sotapati phala in this case, uh, they will review the fruition uh, consciousness. Then a third process uh, will review uh, Nibbana, Nibbana object. Then the fourth process will review the defilements that has been totally eradicated. And then the fifth process will review those defilements that has not yet been totally eradicated. So there will uh, happen uh, five um, uh, reviewing process uh, looking at these five uh, different uh, items after the person got enlightened. Now for, uh, for Sakadagami, uh, or anagami, then they will review the first three, uh, first one, uh, same maga, uh, will review their uh, re relative relevant maga and the relevant uh, uh, phala. And then the third process, nibbana. And then the fourth process will uh, will be the defilements that has been eradicated. Yeah. So depending on the uh, maga the, that they have attained, the reviewing process will review uh, accordingly. So for, say for, Arahata Maga, uh, Witi, the reviewing process here will be uh, only four because uh, all defilements have been totally eradicated. No? So a fifth process will not arise because he has no defilement left over, not eradicated yet. So only for the Arahata, it will be a little bit different. So first one, Maga, Fala, Nibbana, then the eradicated defilements. And then for the first three stages, also, uh, another reviewing process of the defilements that are not eradicated yet. So these five reviewing process will come right after the path process. So therefore, um, after we have this information, we will know that uh, sometimes some people ask, they said that, is it possible that a person has attained uh, uh, enlightenment without even knowing? So now we will know very clearly, we can answer that no, it is not possible because after the path process, surely this reviewing process will arise in the person. He, he or she will surely know that he has gotten enlightenment because he has reviewed the Maga, he has reviewed the Fala, reviewed the Nibbana, reviewed those uh, uh, defilements that has been eradicated and those that still he has to work on. Yeah, so he is very clear that, that he has attained enlightenment. So it is not possible that a, a person attained enlightenment without knowing. Yeah, okay. So after so what, what, would the, the, what, would what would be the, the object, object in the reviewing process? process? 
Will, will that be a nibbana? No, right? That's the object. Amar, that's the object. The first reviewing process, the object is maga. The second uh, reviewing process, the object is phala. Second or uh, third, the third reviewing process, the javanas okay. take nibbana as object. No? Then the fifth reviewing process, it takes the eradicated defilements as its object and review it. Yeah. And so these are the objects of the reviewing process. Oh, no, 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 not the object. Sorry, sorry. I was going to ask uh, the chitta. What kind of chitta? What kind be? of chitta? That will be yeah. if it is a person that is um, a non arahant, that will be kamavachara kusala chitta. Right, but this guy is already uh, sota pati, minimum sota pati, right? So what, yes. what kind of chitta would be then? In Therefore, Java? kamavachara kusala chitta. Oh, okay. Still kusala because he is uh, reviewing, uh, but this is not, uh, uh, of course, this javanas here, it, it, it is a sense fear, mind or process. So these are kusala chitas. If it is an araha reviewing, this will be kriya chitas. If it's a, okay, if it's Arahat, a sota no? pati, if it's a sota pati, it would be sense fear, right? Sense fear kusala chita. Yeah, for Sotapati, Satkagami, and Anagami. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mila. I guess I just wanted to comment or maybe ask a question. Uh, so you were saying that the person will definitely know, but I think it could be that they don't know the language or they don't know much about Buddhism and they just practice and then they just know that something is different but they don't necessarily understand what happened. And then maybe later on they learn about it. Um, is that it possible? Is, um, it is not possible that, uh, I mean, he might not know what it is called, but surely he know, he or she knows what happened. Now, he might not know the name exactly of the process or of this thing, but uh, he will surely know that he has uh, gained enlightenment. Like, uh, uh, so it is um, not knowing meaning like uh, um, that that he is not sure. Like, uh, I, I think maybe I got enlightened. Maybe I didn't. That will not be possible. So if he did got it, if he's not sure, then he, he that most probably he hasn't. Mm -hmm. That the person he will surely okay. know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's continue. Now, after a person uh, um, who has reached the first maga, uh, or the second, or third, or fourth, then if the person, now because maga arised only once, and then the, the, and then the phala uh, will arise immediately two times no and then the maga process is finished but then if the person he wants to um um attain nibbana again he wants to feel that uh, peacefulness of nibbana again then in that case then he will have to um uh, enter another type of process which which is called the phala samapati process the sustained attainment of phala thought process so because Nibbana is peaceful, but uh, Maga will only arise once. So if he wants to uh, attain Nibbana again, that what he needs to do uh, is he needs to practice Vipassana again in order to get into the Phala Samapati process. So what he does is that he he take the uh, uh, Nama and Rupa as object and he practice Vipassana again. And uh, after some time, uh, he he will uh, another process will arise uh, and it will be manodo arawajana mind or averting then it will be four anuloma will arise here so conformity 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 four anuloma will arise and then he will attain the phala samapati then the, for however much time he wants to stay in phala that will be phala 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 chitta to arise like the jhana samapati no a little bit like the jhana uh, attainment but this time he will be um, uh, uh, not in jhana, but in phala samapati. The object is being taken. It's not the concept object of jhana, but instead it is nibbana. So the mind get in touch with the nibbana object again for however much time that he decided to stay in that uh, uh, samapati process. No, 
Then after that, uh, when he wants to emerge from that, then uh, he uh, Bawanga stream will follow. Then he'll fall back to Bawanga, Bawanga stream. Okay, so that is how a person, uh, because it is said that um, Nibbana is very peaceful, is very calm. And uh, so if an uh, enlightened person, he wants to take some rest from this world, uh, from all the chaotic <laughs> uh, things that is happening all the time, then that he, he can attain the Phala Samapati and he can uh, keep his mind in Nibbana and uh, to um, enjoy that peace and calm. Uh, so that is the Phala Samapati, which is possible for uh, the person who has attained. Let's say if it is the first stage of enlightenment, then this Phala will be first uh, Sotapati Phala. No? If it is a person uh, who has attained the second uh, stage of enlightenment, that will be the uh, Sakadagami Phala no? in, in that case, uh, like that. Now, for... Uh, Tika Panyapugala, a kin faculty person, again, it happens like other processes, uh, only three anuloma will arise and then immediately go into a phala process. So for an average um, person, then it will be four uh, anuloma. Okay, and so this phala, depending on the stage of enlightenment that the person has attained. Okay, so that is the phala samapati. Okay, now... Uh, there are some other um, uh, facts that I'd like to share with you about the apana mental processes and mental feeling. Now, apana mental processes, I think you still remember, includes all the jhana and maga and phala processes, right? And uh, so let's take a look at the jhana mental process first uh, in, in relation with vedana, with mental uh, feeling. Uh, in, the first day, in the first attainment process, if... The uh, kusala, the javana here, this parikama upachara anuloma gotrabu, if it is with somanasa, then this jhana will also be with somanasa. You remember uh, when we talked about the, talk about the talaramana, we mentioned that uh, the uh, vedana or each Chitta, they must always associate with a Vedana. Yeah, it's a universal Chetasika, right? So that Vedana, depending on the Vedana uh, of that Chitta, um, Adomanasa or um, Somanasa, they cannot come one after another immediately, right? Remember? And that, in that case, a guest Bawanga will arise, right? So uh, this mental feeling also have, have a role to play in the mental processes. So now here, if the... Um, in the first attainment process, if this kusala javanas uh, is uh, with somanasa, then this jhana will also be with somanasa. Now, if this four is with upeka, then this jhana will also be with upeka. Then it, this happened especially and uh, in the fifth rupa vachara and all the arupa vachara jhanas, no? Because in the first four jhanas, uh, it is associated with piti and sukha, piti or sukha, no? So in that case, it will always be with Somanasa. But with the fifth jhana, it's associated with Upeka. So therefore, all these... Four has javanas, only, you don't have pretty, right? Four, fourth as well. Sorry? In the, fourth, in the fourth jhana also, you don't have piti and Sukha, right? In the fourth jhana, there will be Sukha without piti. Mm. Okay. Sukha and Ekagata. Then become upeka and ekagata. Oh, okay, okay. In the sutta, uh, yes, yeah, sutanta way is uh, is fourth fourth jhana. There's, fourth there's jhana, no yeah. mm -hmm. there's no sukha in fourth jhana, right? In sutanta way. Yes. In, now we're talking okay. about abhidhamma way, so fifth jhana, which okay. is the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay. Yes, okay. Amar. Uh, may I ask you to please use the raise hand button because sometimes if I'm in the middle and if you stop me suddenly. Then the, it might interrupt the the flow of the uh, of the. Okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Yeah, yeah sure. thank you. Okay, so uh, yes, so with the fifth uh, rupa vachara and all the arupa vachara jhanas, uh, it will always associate with upeka. Okay, so for the absorption process, it is in the same way. Um, if this four is associated with uh, somanasa, then all the other jhana in the jhana samapati will also associate with uh, somanasa. 
except for the fifth jhana and the arupavachara jhanas, it will be associated with upeka all the time. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at maga process. So in the same way, we can understand if these kusala chitas, uh, kusala javanas are associated with somanasa, then we can understand that this maga and phala will also be associated with somanasa. So this lokutara chitas will also be associated with somanasa. Um, then if... This one is um, with Somanasa, then the sustained uh, Fala process, Fala Samapati, if the person attained with uh, Somanasa, uh, then he's, uh, the, later on, all the Fala also will be with Somanasa. And in the same way with Upeka, then it is uh, with Upeka also. Yeah, so it is uh, accordingly. Okay, now um, we still have, uh, yes, Amar? Isn't Nibbana is like Bedana free? It's like what? Sorry. Be bedana free, right? Nibbana is unconditioned, right? Uh, Vedana, so of course, Nibbana is Vedana free because Vedana is only associated with Chitta. Nibbana is not a Chitta. No, no, but you're saying here showing Shomanasa, which is a Vedana, right? And then in Fala, if it's a Nibbana is an object, there is no Vedana, right? Now we have to we have to separate. Fala is a chitta. Fala is a vipaka chitta. It is the result of maga. So this fala chitta must associate with a vedana, and it can associate with uh, uh, somanasa. He's taking he's taking nibbana, nibbana as, as object. Object. Yeah. object is object. Chitta is chitta. Okay, but this chitta, the fala chitta, I. Uh, Falachita will have a uh, Vedana? Falachita, of course, it will have Vedana because any Chitta associate with uh, Vedana. Vedana is an is a universal Chetasika, right? So any kind of Chitta must always associate with a Vedana. Okay, then how then Nibbana will be unconditioned? That's that's why I, I understand. That, therefore, I say Fala is not Nibbana. Fala is a Chitta that takes Nibbana as object. Okay. Yeah, Nibbana itself is unconditioned. Nibbana is the object taken by Maga and Fala Chitta. So Nibbana itself, of course, it does not associate with any uh, Vedana because it is not a Chitta, right? Nibbana is Nibbana. Nibbana is uh, an object. It's an object taken by Maga Chitta and Fala Chitta. Yeah, so in the mental process, only Chitta will arise. Object is Thing, object is the object that is being taken by this chitta, right? So we have to separate chitta and object. So one is aramana. Aramana is the object. Aramanika is the chitta that takes the object. Aramana and aramanika, they are different. So phala is a chitta that associate with all the universal uh, chetasikas and other chetasikas as well that takes nibbana as object. Is it clear? Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, maybe we need some time to digest, but it is good to separate them because Fala, although it takes Nibbana as object, it, Fala itself is not Nibbana. They are different. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, I will leave the next uh, topic, which is uh, Niroda Samapati, uh, cessation mental process for next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have uh, uh, some minutes, and if you have any questions, then we can, uh, yes, edit. Hmm. I I wish to ask if uh, there any there is any correlation between um, uh, attain, uh, hmm, being absorbed in uh, phala samapati uh, and um, the next path, whatever whichever the next path is. And any relation between Vala Samapati and the next stage of enlightenment? Yes. yes. I don't think so. Not direct relation. Yeah. So uh, the next path is only uh, related to the wisdom and understanding that yes. you have. Yes. Great. Um, Thank you. 
Yeah, because phala samapati is uh, when the person, when the person, let's say, uh, sotapanna, then he already attained sotapati maga and phala, no? So he wants to... Um, uh, he wants to get in touch with Nibbana again. He wants to uh, experience the peace and calm of Nibbana again that he has already attained. So he can, uh, uh, in that case, uh, he will practice Vipassana again. And then he, the Phala Samapati process, then he can uh, access Nibbana again. So, so he can uh, access Nibbana during that period of time. But if he wants to attain the second stage of enlightenment, then he must practice Vipassana again. And he, he must uh, further his understanding and, and his wisdom uh, in order to attain the second stage of enlightenment. So he has to, uh, again, eliminate his defilements, right? So when his defilements are eliminated, uh, greatly reduced, sense desire and ill will until a certain point, then the second stage of uh, enlightenment, uh, the second maga process can arise. So it does not really have anything to do with the Phala Samapati process. Yes, uh, you, you've you been mentioning that uh, when you were talking about Phala Samapati, that uh, it's like just a rest for the mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was I was like, OK, so it has nothing to do with. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, basically, uh, I don't think so. OK, when someone reaches a stage of enlightenment, you said the wisdom carries over into the next life. Yes. Does that mean that they know uh, past life? Their past life? Not, not necessarily, not necessarily. What uh, the wisdom uh, means, the understanding of uh, what he has already understood. Yeah, of the Dhamma, of, uh, of uh, um, ultimate reality, of reality as it is, that kind of wisdom he has already gained. And in the next lifetime, then he will continue practicing based on that kind of wisdom and he can grow his wisdom. But not necessarily he remembers that where he was born, what is the name of his mother and all this stuff. Like this, these things, it's, uh, 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 they are not actually, they are not wisdom, right? But of course, it is possible if the person, uh, he has jhana and or he, he is reborn as a deva, some type of devas, they remember their past lives as well. So it depends on the type of being they are uh, reborn as. But what I mean by wisdom that is being carried over is the wisdom, the understanding of the Dhamma. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. I just wanted to ask about what uh, Mila was asking, um, the revisions, the five revisions after attain, uh, uh, attaining Sotapanna or something. So I, th I thought uh, it's maybe related to doubt, like how doubt is uh, eradicated uh, with Sotapanna. So uh, a Sotapanna would not doubt what happened because um, because uh, he surely or he or she surely saw um, Nibbana, uh, Fala, and so on? Um, this Tao specifically, this Vishikicha that is uh, being eradicated during the uh, Sotapati Maga is related to the Dhamma, uh, related to uh, the Buddha's teaching, to the path, to how enlightenment is being attained, uh, to the Noble Eightfold Path then he has no doubts about how uh, to arrive there because he has already walked the path, right? Uh, yeah. He knows. Yeah. So that kind of doubt he does not have. But uh, whether he doubt he himself has an, attained enlightenment or not, I think if he has this kind of doubt, then probably he might not have uh, attained enlightenment yet. But uh, whether it yeah. is directly related or not, uh, um, the, it is not specified. Yeah. Well, it seems that directly related because uh, because if he did indeed see all this then it uh, yeah the doubt of surely, uh, yeah. themselves if he, being if, yeah. he, if he is sure about the dhamma he will surely know that he has attained yeah. what he has attained yeah mm. yeah okay uh yes amar yeah also the doubt about uh, other factors like you know doubt about next life that will also be removed right yes because he see cause not, and effect right 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 not, not only the like uh buddha dhamma right the, uh, that's included the in the dhamma yeah, reality right. yeah how reality yeah. work is part of dhamma right right, right. Mm -hmm. okay 
All right. So uh, if we don't have any more questions, then the, we will uh, stop here today and uh, let's uh, dedicate our effort uh, for the attainment of Magafala, that those processes that we have looked at today may it arise in us quickly, very soon. And uh, some um, uh, previously, uh, one teacher in Myanmar, he used to say that may you attain uh, enlightenment quickly and easily. So uh, may it ha all happen to us all. May we all attain uh, Nibbana, Maga and Fala uh, quickly and easily. And also we'll share merits with all beings. Yeah? Okay. So, itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo ho tu. Itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo ho tu. Itam no punyam maga fala nyana sa pacheyo ho tu. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, Thank so you. Have a very wonderful week ahead, and I will see you again next week. Thank you so much. Uh, very nice to see everyone. Bye bye. It's very nice to see everyone. And I also would like to take this opportunity to thank you everyone for this opportunity to share the Dhamma and to discuss the Dhamma. Uh, it makes me very happy. And uh, I think this is because of Kusala mind state. When we talk about the Dhamma, when we think about the Dhamma, then a lot of Kusala is generated in the mind. And this is really good. Uh, um, it Not only for, for now, but for our um, uh, practice. Uh, it, it will be supportive conditions for the attainment of Nibbana as well. So thank you everyone for this opportunity, for this time that we're sharing together. Okay. So thank see you, you next week. Thank you.